Welcome, everybody. It's April 29th. It's Brad Show Live. It's Hump Day on Wednesday. So we will be getting to some Hump Day stuff, too. So tune in. Stay tuned. I hope you're tuning in. But stay tuned as well. And uh, we'll also be getting to your immigration questions also on our Wednesday, April 29th edition of Pandemic Quarantine. Pop up on Bradshaw Live. Let me say hello to Donna Bless Squad up. Katie and Plunkett, how are you? Violet Blackwood, what's going on? Sheer blessed and highly favored parrot. Squad up. How are you? Marilyn Miller, what's going on? Latoya is forever Peterson. She's still with him. Tracy Aves, good afternoon. Sasha Ford, squad up. Nancy Abel, good evening. Uncle Brad, squad up. How are you, Nancy? Janice Williams Smith was patiently waiting. We were all patiently waiting. Uh, I was patiently waiting. We had some technical snafus, but Lee was able to actually get out of his bed. We had to force him. He had to walk over across the room, plug something in, get back into bed, tuck himself in, and now we're ready to go. Uh, Marcia McCullough, squad up. How are you? First Lady Leah, squad up. Chetty Mandori, what's going on? Jonette Palmer saying, hi, Uncle Brad. Thank you for all your information. I, I, I give you what's in my brain. That's all I can give. So whatever's in my brain comes right out of my mouth. I give it all. Uh, Donna Blessing, squad up too. And we're also live on YouTube on Hump Day. We have 44 people watching. Eight people have given thumbs up so far. Let's see what uh, they have to say. And um, here we go. David Wrighting, squad up. And Muka, wow. Muka, you're giving me a hard time here with your name, but I'm going to try my best. Muka Mama Diyukub. Muk Ama Diyukub. Yukabov, saying, hello, Brad, squad up. Back it up, Ricky, saying good evening. We got to give. By the way, we got to give uh, Muka Madiyukub Yakubov a nickname because there's no way if he's going to be coming to our show every day, uh, he's got to get a nickname. Big M. <laughs> We're called Big M from now on. Hello, Big M. And uh, Bolaji Mohammed saying hello, Brad Squad up. Jojo you know, Muniz saying hello, Brad. Tia Prasad saying hey, Uncle Brad. And everyone, by the way, everybody say on YouTube hello to Big M because I cannot say his name. It's too hard for me, too many syllables. Alyssa Henry squad up, Becky, uh, Becky, Becky saying hello to your Prasad. Nikki, so special, saying hi, Brad. I have uh, an all the squad, just a question. Are the filing fees being raised for the green cards for my wife? They did make, they did make, um, they did make um, uh, a regulation to raise the filing fees. They have not instituted it yet. So hopefully you get your application in before the filing fees uh, uh, get raised. Becky, hallelujah. Becky, hallelujah. Saying, hi, Brad. My friend's husband is filing for his stepson. The I-45 form is required. Legal parent detail. Is it the biological, biological father's details or the stepfather's details that need to be? Um, my friend's husband is filing for his stepson. The legal parent. You would you would put in on the on the um, on the I one thirty. You're putting in the step parents uh, information, and on the I forty five, you would also be putting in the step parents information. And there you go, Becky. Hallelujah! I, I just like saying Hallelujah. Uh, Martin Allen King saying hello, Brad. How you doing? Please, I have a DV visa which will be expiring in May third. Can I renew it after it expires? Um, you're going to have to go back to the embassy. I don't know if they're going to renew it. I hope I hope they renew it, but I, I can't guarantee you that they're going to do it. And the D, on DV visas, it's really tricky. You've got to enter America before um, September 30th. So hopefully, hopefully they will. Uh, but I don't know the answer because the embassies are not open. We don't know what their policy is going to be with people whose immigrant visas have expired and we're not able to get to America because there's no planes flying. So we'll see what happens with that. I don't have an answer for you right now. Uh, Abu Lo, Ab Abdulo, with a question. We'll get back to you uh, in a few minutes. Lady Leah saying hello, 29 Super C. Gervonta, the smart kid steward. 
uh, with a question. We'll get back to you, Gervonta. And forever blessing. Hi, Uncle Brad. What is a yellow courtesy letter? Oh, my God. That's almost like from the movie Airplane. You know, pick up the white courtesy phone, the yellow courtesy phone. A yellow courtesy letter is exactly what it is. It comes on a yellow piece of paper, and they're giving you a notice telling you out of courtesy what's going on with your case. That is what a yellow courtesy letter is. It's exactly what you think it may mean. And uh, before we get into our immigration questions, we uh, have to do something uh, that I always tell everybody to do, which is please share this with your friends and family. Uh, I will be answering immigration questions shortly. We'll be schmoozing shortly. But the best way to get the word out uh, and you, I would think you would want to get the word out to help your friends and help your family uh, is to share this on Facebook. Uh, you can share this onto your timeline. You can share this to your friends on YouTube. You can share this by literally copying the link and putting it in a WhatsApp, uh, or you can text the link to somebody that you think may want to watch this show right now. You can also do a great big favor for me on YouTube and turn those gray thumbs blue Tell everybody in the world that you like this show. The show's good. They see a lot of blue thumbs up. And on, uh, on YouTube and on Facebook, the best way, if you don't want to share this with anybody, the best thing you can do is to make nice, long, smart, intelligent um, uh, comments or questions. Because if you, if you give long, large, uh, detailed, many multiple sentence questions and comments, the algorithms will say, wow, people are very involved in this show and they will push it out to more people. So I ask you to do all of that uh, for me, for the crew, for all of Brad Show Live. And when I'm going to do done with my schmooze, we're going to pull out of my old scratchy hat, somebody who has won a free consultation with me. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll be pulling out the free consultation winner in about 15 minutes. In the meantime, if you do want to speak with me, I have a list of people every day that I speak to, and that list comes from my office. And to get on that list, all you have to do is call 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-LAW-LINK, 1-800-529-5465. Internationally, the number is plus one two one two 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 seven eight nine three three. Tell my secretary that you want to get on Uncle Brad's list. If you've never spoken to me before, then we will charge you a consultation fee. It's $150. Uh, if you are my client, you don't need to uh, ask your question here. You can just call and get on my list. We'll be happy to speak with you. Uh, in the meantime, uh, sit back and relax while we begin to schmooze with Uncle Brad. So first of all, congratulations to the entire Brad Show crew. This is an honoring that goes out to everybody, everybody in the crew. And also congratulations to the entire Brad Show squad because we can't do a show without you. You guys add to this show every day. We were honored yesterday in the 24th annual Webbies, uh, which is the one of the largest, most prestigious uh, awards uh, in the entire world for online video content. And we uh, were honored in the category of public service and activism, which is what we do here every day. Uh, the Webby Awards has been celebrating the best of the internet since 1996. Previous winners have included some of the biggest names in digital and new age media, such as Spotify, Childish Gambino, Westworld, Jimmy Fallon, Will Smith, and many, many more. This year, the organization received more than 13,000 entries from more than 70 countries and 50 states. And of the 13,000 entries, only the top 20% of the work entered in this year was honored. And Bradshaw Live was among the top percentage of entries recognized by the prestigious International Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences. So congratulations to the entire Brad Show crew and the squad. Again, we can't do it without you. We were so thrilled to have been acknowledged and are thankful every day that our show reaches and helps hundreds of thousands of viewers worldwide. Uh, meanwhile, uh, in, other, in other less than fantastic news, 
Uh, that's the only good news of the day. Uh, we were honored. Uh, everything else is just sadness. Uh, the U.S. economy shrank 4.8% in the first quarter amid uh, all of our quarantine shutdowns. The Commerce Department announced today that America's gross domestic product, which is the value of all the goods and services produced, we add up every penny that every, when you say what's the value of goods and services produced, every time money exchanges hands in a business, it gets added up whether it's to go to a law firm, whether it's to go and buy a cheeseburger at McDonald's, whether it's to go buy some shampoo at the drugstore, whatever, whenever you go get your hair done, you pay the hairdresser, whatever it is that you are doing, their money changes hands in a business transaction in the United States. That is the total value when they add up everything. That is the total value of all goods and services produced in the US. And it is down for the first quarter, which is January, February, and March of this year, 4.8%. Now, it is going to go down dramatically more uh, in April, May, and June for the second quarter. Why? Because if you think about it, everything was going great for the U.S. economy till through the end of uh, February and even into early March. It was only the last three, three and a half weeks of March where we started to quarantine, where everything started to slow down, where everybody started getting uh, concerned about the coronavirus. Uh, now, in USA Today, uh, they have already written that the country seems to be in a deep recession. Duh, I don't think we need USA Today to tell us that. I think we all look at it outside. We got 20% unemployment. Everybody's sitting on their couch doing nothing. Uh, we had a record 10 and a half year expansion of the US economy. It is now officially over. About 10 million Americans in industries affected both directly and indirectly lost their jobs in March. They are now, as of the end of April, more than 20 million people on the unemployment. Moody's Analytics estimates that 30% of America's economy is shut. That means one out of every three businesses in America is closed down right now. And they estimate that by May, more than 25 million Americans are going to be laid off. The unemployment rate, which rose from a half a century low of three and a half percent in February, it was the lowest unemployment ever in the history of the United States in February. It was four and a half percent in March. By the end of May, it's gonna be one out of four Americans out of a job. Uh, economists surveyed don't expect the economy to return to its full pandemic level until late 2021. Uh, meanwhile, according to statistics from the John Hopkins University, seems to be a reputable university to follow. Authorities in 211 countries and territories have reported more than 3,167,000 coronavirus cases worldwide since China first reported its first case to the World Health Organization in December. Over 224,500 people have died. Now, in the United States, they didn't really even have a test for coronavirus till early March. So everybody who hospitals were treating in January and February for all random diseases that they attributed to some other death may very well have been coronavirus. So I believe that not only in the United States, but a lot of places in the world, people were dying of coronavirus and it wasn't being recognized. I really believe that that number, unfortunately, is very higher. Also, I know in the United States, people who do not get transported to a uh, hospital and die at home or die on the way to the hospital, they are not being tested to see if they had coronavirus, although they appear to have symptoms of coronavirus, they too are not being counted. Uh, right now, more than 1 million people have tested positive for the virus in the United States, more than 58 thousand people have died. Now, uh, now, a lot of people are going around and not dying, and a lot of people are not even getting sick. Now, from what I have read, this is my opinion, I am not a scientist, I am not a doctor. So I am just saying this based on all of the anecdotal evidence and information that I've read, and I've really read up a lot on this. There appears to be four groups of people that appear to be at the most vulnerable to getting uh, infirmed, getting sick, getting put on a ventilator, 
And if you get put on a ventilator, at least the, t- the statistics unfortunately show that a majority of people who get end up being on a ventilator end up dying, although a lot of people do recover after they're on a ventilator. But when you're on a ventilator, things are getting very dicey for you. And I've noticed that, you know, it could affect anybody, obviously. And there's always, you know, people who, who don't fit into this category. But again, this is my opinion. It appears to be that the people who are getting sick and the people who are getting hospitalized and the people who end up dying or even being put on ventilators fall into one of four categories. You're old, you're fat, you're obese, uh, you have diabetes, you have hypertension. Uh, Those are the four groups of people, or or even a fifth one, you have some underlying very serious illness, cancer or something else. Um, But those are the four or five indicators, to me at least. Now, I haven't seen any scientific study particularly that says it, I'm just telling you from my opinion, that if you are elderly, you have hypertension, which is high blood pressure, you have diabetes, you're overweight, um, those are the people who are most at risk of getting ill from coronavirus. That doesn't mean, you know, uh, I don't have hypertension, for example. I don't. I have my, my blood pressure is 120 over 80, which is quite remarkable given all the stress I'm under, but apparently it's just the way I'm wired. Um, but that doesn't mean that if I get coronavirus, I won't get sick and go to the hospital and die, God forbid. But it seems to me that the, the, that group of people are more at risk than others. Now, according to the new death statistics from the Centers for Disease uh, Control and Prevention, total deaths in seven states that have been hard hit by the coronavirus pandemic are nearly 50% higher than normal for the five weeks from March 8th through April 11th of the previous year, which means it's, it's, which means that, you know, every year you would expect around the same period of time in each particular state that the same number of people will die because nothing changes. But in these seven particular states that they did their research on, the death rate from last year to this year in the same period is 50% more. That is 9,000 more deaths than were actually reported as of April 11th in official counts of deaths from the coronavirus. So this new data is partial and most likely undercounts the recent death toll significantly. It also illustrates how the coronavirus is causing a surge in deaths in the places that it has struck. For example, um, in New York City, the home of the biggest outbreak, the number of deaths over this period is more than three times the normal number. In Ecuador, they are more than 80% higher than normal. In Paris, more than twice as many people are dying every day as they did the same time last year. Now, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, says that we're in for it again next year. Just because we're out of the woods or we're getting out of the woods for this summer doesn't mean we're not in it next year. It's going to be, as he said, inevitable. Fauci said in an interview with the Economic Club yesterday, the virus probably won't go away due to how contagious it, contagious it is and, and how it has reached around the entire world. He said he believes the United States is going to have the testing capacity. We don't have it yet. It needs by the end of May or early June. Now, as far as testing is concerned, you can, from what I understand, I have not done it personally, but I know that at least in the New York City area, because that's all I can tell you about, because that's where I live, I understand that you can go and call this local city MD, which is the local clinics around New York City, and there is a line, and you can go wait online, and you can get tested if you want for coronavirus. You can also get tested for the antibody to see that if you already had coronavirus, uh, they are doing those tests, you gotta call City MD in advance. Now, what was interesting is that Dr. Fauci, because that's who we're listening to, that's who I listen to, he was chosen by 45% of the of people surveyed uh, that says they will listen to him over anybody else. Uh, then the next group of people who they would listen to is their own state governor, followed at 35%, followed by Donald Trump at only 
20%. Now, this was a study conducted by the Center for the Digital Future of the United USC Annenberg School for Communications. Uh, and what it basically comes down to is that Dr. Fauci is given uh, authority here in the, in, in the United States. When I say given authority, he is the given authority that people rely on for information. Donald Trump, only one out of five people actually rely on Donald Trump for information. What's even crazier is, according to a new Siena College Research Institute poll, New Yorkers overwhelmingly trust Governor Andrew Cuomo more than they do President Trump. Respondents said that in the state of New York, 78% trust Andrew Cuomo to only 16% Donald Trump. In the same poll, Republicans, which is Donald Trump's party, also said they prefer Cuomo over Trump at 56 and 57% respectively, favoring the governor. Those were conservative voters and Republicans uh, favoring Trump at 56 cons uh, conservative voters, 57% Republicans over the governor. Now, uh, one, of, one of the dumbest things I've seen in a long time was yesterday, Vice President Pence visited the Mayo Clinic, which in of itself is not dumb. The Vice President goes to visit a major hospital out of Minnesota, one of the most famous hospitals in the United States of America. But he's walking around, look at this, he's walking around without a mask. Can you believe it? Everybody in this freaking hospital has a mask. Why the hell does this guy not have a mask? Why in a million years would this guy walk around the hospital without a mask? Well, when he, when he, when he was asked, he says, well, I get treated for a coronavirus every day. I don't need to wear a mask. I don't get treated, I get tested. But so what? That doesn't mean because you get tested daily or every other day or every three days that you didn't catch coronavirus between the time you got tested and now, number one. Number two, you can be infecting everybody. But more importantly, you got to lead. And you got to lead by example. And if you want people to follow your guidelines, which is walk around with a mask so you don't infect other people, you got to walk the walk and talk the talk which is you got to walk around with a mask. Everybody else in this meeting with Vice President Pence had a mask on, everyone from the government, all the doctors, all the nurses, everybody, but this guy. And that is what I would call two things. One, a terrible leader. And I even said to Joe, what a dick. And I hate to say that word because I don't like to curse a lot, but really, what a dick. You know, Pence told reporters, you know, as the, I'm, I'm going to quote him now, as the Vice President of the United States, I'm tested for the coronavirus on a regular basis. And everyone who's around me is tested for the coronavirus. And since I don't have the coronavirus, I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to be here, to be able to speak to those researchers, these incredible healthcare personnel, and look them in the eye and say, thank you. You know what you could have done? Okay, first of all, your mask doesn't go over your eye, so you could look them in the eye even, without wearing, even with wearing a mask, okay? But the best way to say thank you to our healthcare personnel and our first responders is to follow the procedures that are laid out to stop this disease. You got to follow. You want to thank me? Why don't you follow the freaking procedures? Now, instructions on the Mayo Clinic's website request every patient, every visitor, every personnel who walks into that building to wear a face mask. In a tweet eventually deleted but captured in screenshots by the Internet Archive's Wayback Machine, the Mayo Clinic wrote, that it had, quote, informed the vice president of the masking policy prior to his arrival today. President Trump has not publicly also worn a face mask during press briefings and other events, saying earlier this month, I just don't want to wear one myself. It's a recommendation. They recommend it. Uh, during an April 3rd coronavirus task force briefing, Trump said, I don't know. Somehow I don't see it for myself. Well, you know what? This is bad leadership all around. We know he's a bad leader. We know he says stupid things. Not only does he do stupid things, he now says stupid things. He now does stupid things. And what more ridiculous thing than to not wear a mask in public in a hospital? You want other people to wear masks. You want other people to follow directions. You want other people to not spread the disease. 
you have to do the same thing. Who the hell says? Who the hell? Who the hell says that you're um, that you you don't you don't follow the law? And this is unfortunately, this is unfortunately just typical of the Trump administration because they don't think they have to follow laws. The laws are for everybody else, but Donald Trump and Mike Pence. Everybody should follow the law, but Donald Trump, he can make his own laws. He can shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue. He can make he can make uh, deals with the Russians to rig an election. He doesn't have to follow laws, but everybody else does. Just annoying me. Now, CDC also said that they are going to extend their coronavirus social distancing guidelines to pets. Yes, it turns out that pets also can give you coronavirus and also you can give the coronavirus to your pet. The agency said in an advisory, treat pets as you would other human family members. Do not let pets interact with people or animals outside the household. If a person inside the household becomes sick, I isolate that person from everyone else, including the pets. The organization is also advising pet owners to avoid dog parks, public places where a large number of people and dogs gather. Uh, and this is after uh, coronavirus was discovered on some lions in the Bronx Zoo and some other animals that we talked about previously. Um, the New York Times, Sean Hannity, uh, we got to get to our hump day, but quickly, Sean Hannity uh, wrote a 12 page letter threatening, you know, this guy on Fox News, uh, threatening the Legal Times. The Fox News host, Sean Hannity, threatened legal action against the New York Times over some stories about the coronavirus pandemic that painted him and his network in an unflattering light. Fact is, it's the truth, okay? Uh, they, they downplayed coronavirus for a very long time. Now, and as a result, people believed that they shouldn't take coronavirus seriously. Now, Hannity's attorney sent the Times a 12-page letter demanding a retraction and an apology over its recent coverage, including a story about a Fox News viewer who went on a cruise in March and later died of coronavirus. The April 18th uh, opinion column by Gina Belafonte quoted a woman saying that her father, Joe Joyce, watched Fox, believe it was under control, flew to Florida, went on a cruise to Spain, enjoyed himself, came back, got coronavirus and died. And had he not listened to Sean Hannity and, and had he listened to other news and had Sean Hannity told the news that was really happening and not downplayed coronavirus, maybe he would have been more concerned about it, not gone on this cruise, and as a result would not have died. Uh, the daughter exactly said this. He didn't think that he could have it because he wasn't 100% confident that it was a thing because Hannity was saying that. Now, now uh, Joyce died on April 9th. We talked about it on my show. Uh, a few days ago, Hannity complained on the air that the newspaper all but accused me of murder. He asked them to apologize. And in a one word response from the New York Times, they wrote, in response to your request for an apology and retraction, our answer is, quote, no. All right. So let's get a little to uh, hump day. We have any, do we have, do we have you have any cat? We do have a camel. He's in the corner. We have a flying camel today. And he seems to not be able to. Well, he just did a flip, the flying camel. He flew back the other way. We have two flying camels up in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, this was actually funny. Um, a uh, Good Morning America reporter's unfortunate pantsless video chat uh, serves as a cautionary tale to everybody who is broadcasting from home, including myself. I will stand up. I will show you that I have jeans on. I am not, I am not pantless right now. However, since many people have to call into virtual video meetings during the week, and this not only goes for live video, but it also goes for any Zoom meetings that you may be into, people have just only been dressing from the top half of their body in professional attire and wearing whatever pants they want on the bottom part. But when Will Reeve, an ABC reporter who called into Good Morning America on Tuesday, tried to wear half a suit on the air and no pants on the bottom, things just didn't go as well. As Reeve was discussing how pharmacies are using drones to deliver prescriptions to retirement home in Florida, it became very clear he wasn't wearing any pants at all. Eee. 
Reeves' lack of pants is slightly noticeable at the start of the segment, but he comes impossible to ignore by the end. If you watch, um, if you watch uh, very closely Roback's uh, face toward the end of the segment, it seems she eventually noticed Reeves' lack of pants, and a bunch of viewers at home did too. Reeves seemed to be taking it hilariously, uh, and he even tweeted a few acknowledgments of the mishap. When BuzzFeed News reached out to Reeves for comment, the reporter replied, let me get dressed and I'll get back to you soon. So at least he's taking it, he's taking it in stride. Uh, a strip club in Oregon, and the strippers can't get near their customers. Uh, the strip club is closed. So an Oregon strip club, which has been forced into the takeout dining business, because they do serve food at the strip club, at least this particular strip club, uh, they are using their strippers to deliver the food. The Lucky Devil Lounge in Southeast Portland. So if you want to get food delivered by a stripper, you can call the Lucky Devil Lounge in Southeast Portland. They've been closed since Governor Kate Brown banned large public gatherings since March 16th. In many states, locking down commerce to curb the coronavirus, but in ter determined to keep some semblance, semblance of the business intact and to keep the strippers employed. The Lucky Devil owner, Sean Bolden, retooled his kitchen to offer food for delivery the next day. Though receipts plummeted, absent the club's usual main attractions of scantily clad dancers. So in an interview, he decided he was going to have the dancers and the strippers deliver the food. Uh, it was originally thought of as a joke, but people started calling. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, uh, the phones were ringing off the hook. Within weeks, the luck Lucky Devil was up and running and uh, new adult entertainment options. A drive through pole dance show for carryout orders and food delivery by dancers. So you can actually go pick up, get a pole dance and the food delivered in your car, or you can get it delivered by the pole dancers. The club charges $30 extra for either of these options, plus the food. The club's drive through is promoted on social media with the hashtag food to go go. The performances include throbbing music by a DJ, stage lights and prizes presented to customers at a safe distance. Now, I want you to know something. If there was ever entrepreneurial spirit, that is that is the most entrepreneurial spirited thing I've heard all week. They figured out how to get the strip club back in business, and people are people are. This is the most popular restaurant in Portland now. Uh, this is some good news, I guess. Uh, safe sex in the city. Uh, it appears that social distancing has reduced the number of sexually transmitted diseases in New York City since coronavirus appeared in March, in early March, because people aren't meeting at the bars, the clubs anymore. They're shacked up with only one person. So um, nobody's, nobody's sleeping around and giving their significant other some diseases. That's some nice, nice good news. According to statistics from the city health department, the number of confirmed cases of STDs fell more than 80%, 80 the week of April 12th. Uh, and finally, uh, not a finally, just a couple more. Uh, it was determined that coronavirus is not transmitted sexually. Uh, you cannot get, have sex with somebody and give them coronavirus on their genital area. So it's not like you, you know, you can still give a, you can still give gonorrhea, you can still give them syphilis, but you're not going to give them a case of coronavirus on on your genital areas. An international group of scientists in the United States and China found that there is no evidence that coronavirus swims in the semen. And, uh, and, and on average, uh, Chinese men who tested positive for the deadly virus a month earlier did not give any coronavirus to their significant other when having sex. Now, obviously, if you are contagious for the coronavirus and you're kissing somebody, your saliva is gonna transmit the coronavirus from your mouth to somebody else's mouth, uh, but, uh, the actual semen and sexual fluids are not transmitting. So if you can figure out a way to put bags over your head, I guess, or, or have sex with, with masks on, I guess, I guess you'll be okay. And finally, um, Florida officials are warning motorists of aggressive alligators during mating season. Officials are warning Florida motorists to beware of road rage, but not from fellow drivers. The Manatee County Sheriff's Office said on Facebook, it's gator mating season. This means they could be more mobile and aggressive than usual. We don't have enough problems in this world. We now have problems with horny alligators on the roads in Florida. 
So please beware. And with that, folks, that is our hump day and our schmooze for the day. We got to get to your immigration questions. Before I get to your immigration questions, let me remind everybody my telephone number if you want to reach me for uh, to get on my list tomorrow to speak with me for an immigration consultation is 1 800 529 5465. That's 1 800 Law Link. Uh, I also have to pull out of my hat right now. I have my scratchy old hat. And in my scratchy old hat is the names of all of the people who entered our Instagram contest on at Bradshaw Live to win a free consultation with me. Now, what did they do? They followed at Bradshaw Live on Instagram. They found the post that said, win a free consultation. They liked that post and they tagged five of their friends. This was the, this was the old post. We're now going to put up a new post. We're going to do a new contest for next Wednesday. By the way, I noticed right before I got on the air that somebody, somebody, I don't know who it was, tagged five friends two minutes before I got on the air. That was too late, man. I can't put your name in, in Uncle Brad's scratchy old hat two minutes before I get on the air. You got to do it now. So if you do it right now, you can, um, you, there it is right there. That's our new graphic for the new, co new consultation giveaway that will well, pull out of the hat next Wednesday. You got to like that post. You got to follow Bradshaw Live, tag five friends. In the meantime, let me shake up Uncle Brad's old scratchy hat and let me see who's going to win a consultation with me today or tomorrow. And I'm putting my hand in here. I don't want anyone to, to think I'm doing something underhanded. Uh, well, that, that would be funny, underhanded with my hand in the hat. Uh, and the winner is, I have a name. The winner is... Amici CC, Amici CC, A M A E C H I. I think that's what it says. Amici CC is the winner. By the way, if you notice, I cut my finger. I've been cooking a lot and I sliced my finger cooking yesterday. So I was bleeding all over the place, but uh, luckily I have survived. Uh, what else do I got to tell you? Don't forget to subscribe. To YouTube. If you subscribe on YouTube, you'll always be notified. Please subscribe. Don't be scared not to subscribe. We want you to subscribe. We want to build up our subscribers. If you're watching this show and you like this show, subscribe to YouTube right now uh, because then you'll be notified every time we come on the air. We have 152 people watching on YouTube. 59 people gave me a thumbs up. One guy or one lady just doesn't like the words coming out of my mouth, gave me a thumbs down. Let's teach that person a lesson. Let's give us our, a whole bunch of thumbs up on YouTube and on Facebook. Now is the time to like and follow Facebook. Uh, why do you want to like and follow Bradshaw Live on Facebook? So you are notified every time I come live on the air. You'll never miss me ever, ever again. As well as, as well as it's always nice to support Brad Show Live. Just like we support you, I want you to support me. The best way to support me is subscribe to our channels, which is YouTube Brad Show Live and Facebook Brad Show Live. Also on Facebook right now is the time to start your watch parties because I am going to start answering your immigration questions in the next 15 seconds as soon as, as soon as Lee from his bedroom puts up our new graphic. You got a question, I got an answer for you. All right, I have my I have my phone out here for the YouTube questions. It's easier to read off the phone here. It's Kofi Yankson has a question. Hi, Uncle Brad. Wow, Kofi Yankson giving me an entire encyclopedia. All right, let's. You got it. You gives me an encyclopedia. This is what we're going to read. I hope we don't you don't put us to sleep with this question, Kofi. Hi, Uncle Brad. Please, this question is for my friend. Yeah, right. Uh, your your friend didn't give you an encyclopedia to ask, but okay, we believe you. In 2005, I applied for a tourist visa in Ghana and was a student by then. And the consular officer said, I am not qualified for the visa at that time, so I should try another time. Whilst I was in school, I changed my name before graduation. And after graduation, I was employed by a company called NACVO. In 2012, I applied for a tourist visa again at the USA Embassy. And the consular officer asked me the job I'm doing. After telling him the job I'm doing, he said, I've qualified for the visa this time but I have my name changed, so he wants me to bring an affidavit from the court to show 
that I have changed my name legally after giving him the affidavit. He then issued me the visa. I am now in the USA and I am now married to a USA citizen. Please, my question is, will I have a problem for my marriage based green card interview because of my name change? No, if you have a legal name change, it's fine. Get married in your legal name. That's your new name. Why not get married in that name? Um, that doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, you told the truth at the embassy. The only time, the only time you have problems with name changes is when you don't tell the truth. Um, sweet Stacy Evans, just telling me I'm doing a fantastic job. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Uh, Stacy Ann Purier Bago. Hi, Brad. I have a question for you. I want to adopt my niece from Jamaica. How do I go about it? If you are going to adopt a niece from Jamaica, the only way to go about it realistically is to do the adoption in America. Well, how do you do the adoption in America? You got to bring your niece to America as an orphan, which means you either have to show that the mother and father are dead, the mother and father abandoned the child, the mother and father are neglecting the child, or the mother, the father has abandoned the child and the mother is unable to support the child. You then have to have the Jamaican authorities strip the parents of their parental rights if they're alive. You can't get permission from the parents because then that would not be an orphan. You then have to get a pre-adoption certificate from a local judge here that when the child comes to America, he or she will do an adoption and then you file the immigration papers. It is a process. The last thing you wanna do when you go to do an adoption in Jamaica is two things. Number one, do the adoption in Jamaica. You're unlikely to get the child here because you gotta prove that you lived in the same home as the child for two years, which is unlikely that ever happened. And two, if you do an adoption in Jamaica, you'll never bring the child here as an orphan because the parents consented to the uh, adoption and therefore that is not an orphan case. So do it my process and contact me and get on my list, 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-LAWLINK. Bernadette Mamoun Dog. Uh, hi, Uncle Brad. Hope you are doing well. My green card interview was canceled due to coronavirus. I was asked to bring a recent medical exam. Do I need to make another doctor's appointment if it's past 60 days? Your medical will be good as long as it's good for one year. As long as it was done in the last year, your medical is fine. Um, Kashambi Muwiwa. Muwiwa. Mwawa. Mwiwa. Something like that. I have a visa that expires in 2022. I've been outside the U.S. since January. How true is it that I can only stay outside the States for not more than six months? If I stay out longer, can it get revoked? I don't know what visa you have. So it depends what visa you are talking about. So I'm not sure what you are talking about. So tell me what exactly your situation is. Najaro Samwell. Hi, Brad. Squad up. I got an expedited removal for working illegally on a tourist visa. Well, that's a B1, B2. I got banned for five years and I sent to Mexico where I have residency, but I'm from Africa. Kindly help. You are banned not for five years. You have two bans. You have one ban for five years for the summary exclusion, and then you have a permanent ban for misrepresentation uh, for entering on a tourist visa when you're intending to work. Misrepresentation ban is a permanent bar the uh, actual deportation or inadmissibility finding at an airport is a five-year bar. You need two waivers to come back, one waiver after being deported, one waiver for misrepresentation. I, the misrepresentation waivers, you only get through family, parents and spouses, not through children. So first step is, do you have a parent or a spouse or a potential spouse? If not, not only can I not help you, nobody can. So if you want, give me a call and we can talk about it more. Zakir Hasildar, I have a cancellation petition in and I appear in front of a judge and was stamped. My other court date is 2023, but I applied for a work permit in September, but didn't get it as yet. How long do I have to wait? I don't have any idea what you're talking about. All right. Obviously, you file for cancellation or removal. Uh, you're in deportation and you have a stamp. I don't know what stamp you're talking about. Your court date is 2023. I guess what you're saying is you made an application for cancellation or removal. And because you made an application for cancellation or removal, you're entitled to a work permit. You filed for it in September. You didn't get it yet. You should have gotten it. I don't know why you didn't. Um, so you would need to call me. I don't have the answer why you didn't get it. Um, 
Bay Uma. Uncle B in the house. What happened to the beard game? Unhappy face. It was going strong. Well, the beard game, it was too fuzzy. I kept rubbing my face all day. I just wanted to keep my hands off my face. So I got so I got rid of the beard. So the beard game is over. I know it's going strong. Maybe I'll grow it back. I was just I was just touching my face way too much. Young Money Rogers has a question. My driver's license was expired. I got pulled over for an expired driver's license and I got a ticket. Is that going to affect my VAWA case, Uncle Brad? Y yes, it does. Um, to a certain extent, you got to prove that you're a person of good moral character. I don't think driving with an expired driver's license and getting a ticket would show bad moral character. I think if you continually, dr continuously drive and get multiple tickets, uh, then that could lead to bad moral character. I think one ticket for driving with an unlicensed, uh, as an unlicensed vehicle would not indicate bad moral character. But when you ask, does it affect it? Yes. Will you get denied as a result of it? Oh, gosh, extraordinarily unlikely. Um, Sista Titra. How long does it take for the Board of Immigration Appeals to approve an EOIR 29? Well, you, you, your case is on appeal. The Board of Immigration Appeals hold, hears many, many different cases. They hear cases from, they hear cases from USCIS. They hear cases from, um, from the immigration courts. So I don't know what your case is about. And I would say and when you are very hopeful that the BIA is going to approve your case, but usually the BIA denies it. How long BIA takes to review cases? I've seen cases take as short as six months. I've seen cases take as long as three, four years. Uh, but I would not be overly optimistic about approval of BIA appeals, not to say they don't win, not to say we don't win them. I'm just saying don't be overly optimistic. You may want to uh, have a consultation with me. Let's go over to YouTube, see what's happening on YouTube. Delmar Small says, my mom and dad coming to live in the USA, but because of the pandemic, they don't get any appointment. Uh, but I want to know what's your best option. Will you advise me? I don't know what the best option is. I need to know a lot more about their case. I think you need to give me a call and get on my list. Let's, uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, Cecilia Brown, would it affect an immigrant if I reported someone who stole tax returns by sending it to their account and now the stimulus check went to her again due to not refile it? Well, you can report all the immigrants you want. If that particular immigrant gets arrested for tax fraud, then yeah, it's going to affect them. Tiara L., I, Brad, can a widow without a social security number collect her husband's social security? Um, you should be able to, yes. Me, makeover gallery. If my fiance from Nigeria filed twice for a tourist visa two years ago, do you recommend filing a K-1 or a tourist? Well, the tourist visa was denied, and they denied the tourist visa twice because the, your fiance obviously did not have uh, a non-immigrant intent. There is now a bar, a uh, Nigerian bar, but that's for immigrant visas. I would absolutely recommend the K-1 filing at this point in time. Uh, Rassel Tal Talukter, can I file a mandamus or threat of a mandamus? You can always do that. Whether it's the appropriate time to do it or not, that's a decision I think you should make in consultation with an attorney. Um, because you want, when you do it or threaten to do it, you want to make sure it's done right. Uh, meek makeover gallery. Can I use my house and car as an asset for income requirements for K1 if I'm short a few thousand? You can, but if you're short a few thousand, get a second affidavit of support. That's much better. Uh, YNM Sajib Udala. Udula. Hey, Brad. My I-45 is pending since I interviewed April 11th, 2019. I got an I-130 approved and I submitted inquiries in a letter, but still say it's pending. That is, that is a statement. Um, if your case was been interviewed since April, 2019, you're now one year into it. You may want to call me to see what's going on. Um, I'm not saying mandamus. I'm just saying call me and we can figure it out. Charlie and the chocolate factory. 
uh, otherwise known as Charlie Chocolate, says, Hi, Brad. If someone has the wrong date of birth for his mom on the G325A, it can affect the VAWA interview. Uh, it can, but at the interview, if you have the wrong date of birth, you can always correct forms at the time of the interview. So if you make an error on a form, you could always go on the interview and before the interview starts, tell the officer, I have an error on the form, I want to correct it. And then that, that should be fine. Um, ja Shiv Shankar says, hi, Uncle Brad. I got a green card by VAWA two months ago. When could I apply for citizenship? 2.6 or three years of marriage again to a non-US immigrant. Time will be the same. The time will be the same whether you get married or not. You can file 90 days before the three-year anniversary of you getting your green card. Um, Abu Lo. Hi, my wife is a U.S. citizen. She gave me a two-year green card. After that, she applied for my kids overseas. We paid for everything to the National Visa Center. After that, my wife passed away. What's going to happen to my kids? Uh, well, once your wife passes away, that's the end of the case. Now, what you can do is you can step into the shoes of your deceased wife, and my condolences to you. Well, you can step into the shoes of your deceased wife, show humanitarian reasons why the kids need to join you here. I'm sure we can come up with plenty of humanitarian reasons why they want to be with their father, and uh, we'll get them here. Just need some time to get you to step into the shoes of your deceased wife. Excuse me. Um, Rupan Talakdor, I have a new update, a lawsuit against Trump's 60 days plan. Can you please tell us? Thanks. We talked about that yesterday. Um, and there is a lawsuit against Trump, uh, and it was put in for an injunction against the 60 day ban. We'll see what happens. It's all part of the same litigation. It, it emanates out of the same litigation as the lawsuit in Oregon that prevented him from requiring immigrants to have health insurance when they got their green card. Um, let's see what else we got here. It's me, Kevin. It's me, Kevin. I understand it. It's me, Kevin. It's me, Brad. Yes, it's me, Kevin's question. Hi, Brad. Just check my status of my application for my I-751, and it's scheduled to be interviewed. The problem is me and my spouse is not together anymore. We did not do a divorce. Uh, do I need to waive my I-751? If you and your spouse are not together, I would start a divorce immediately because the only way that you can get a waiver of the I-751 is to prove abuse or Prove that prove that you're in a divorce. Uh, so it's me, Kevin. Uh, it's me, Brad. Get on my list tomorrow. One eight hundred five two nine five four six five. That's one eight hundred Law Link. Benny Eddy. Hi, Uncle Brad. Please, can I submit my spouse's application without the medical exam form because I'm avoiding the coronavirus in the hospital? I submit without it now. Yes, you can submit your adjustment without. The medical, you can do the medical at the time of the interview. Laser home spa. If the USCIS does not approve your I-45 green card, do they then send an order of deportation if you've been married to a U.S. citizen for more than two years? Uh, if they do not approve your I-45, that means you are now out of status. You are on their radar as being out of status. And generally speaking, yes, you would get put in removal. That doesn't mean you would get deported. That doesn't mean that you cannot get your green card, just means that they denied your case. We gotta figure out why and how we can fix it or whether we can refile again or fix it in removal, that's a different story. But the general answer is yes. That doesn't mean every person who has their I-45 is put in deportation, but lots are. Um, Stacy Johnson, where'd Stacy Johnson go? Here she is. Hi Brad, you're doing a great job. I've been listening to your show for a while now. I find your show very detailed and informative. Keep up the good work. Thank you. One of the pre-comments of the day from Stacey Johnson. Um, Gervonta, the smart kid, Stuart. Smart as a whip because he's watching this show and asking questions. Will USCIS still be processing I-130 applications done by a green card holder under the 60-day ban? Presum presumably the answer is yes, they will be. Mariatu Ducori, hi Brad, thinking on bringing my stepdaughter in the state, but not, do not want to put on her mother's name on the case. Can you advise me? What do you mean you want to bring your stepdaughter, but you don't want to put her mother's name on the case? I don't know what, I don't even understand what you're asking. 
So um, be more specific, be more specific or, um, or just, you know, call me and get on my list. Fox Racing with some random facts in his life. He met Kevin Bacon in Central Park last year. Another person who's six degrees removed from Kevin Bacon, Fox Racing. Um, Jay Pereira. Hi, Brad. When USCIS implants new proposed fee increase, do we have to pay for the EAD and advanced parole on the pending adjustment? No, you should not have to. Uh, Jess Lambau. Hi, Brad. My application is at the National Visa Center. I'm a CNA. Am I affected with the Trump executive order? The answer is yes, but it's only 60 days. So, and there's probably going to be a preliminary injunction. So ultimately, I'm sure you will be getting your green card anyway. Uh, Rebecca O. Hi, Brad. I just got my EAD, uh, but they don't have my social security number. I have a job now. Still no social security number and they need it. USCIS didn't send me information to Social Security Administration, and now I can't possibly go to Social Security Office. Uh, what do I do? Um, you try going online to Social Security. Call Social Security on the phone. I'm sure they're answering their, call, their telephone numbers. Uh, and see how you can navigate it. If not, give me a call. Cesar Nava, I have an N-400. I had my biometrics in February. I'm here more than 30 months. In 2016, it's been, I've been out of the U.S. for 11 months. Do I have a chance? Do I have to draw the N-400? Caesar, good job keeping it up. Um, if you are out of the United States for more than 11 months in 2016, unless you can show significant ties to the U.S. and a really good reason why you were forced to stay out for more than six months, you are most likely going to be denied. I think you need to have a consultation so we can figure out um, the dates when you can refile again if you have to, or what your really good reason is why you are out of the U.S. Because remember, the rules for citizenship are you have to be in the U.S. for 30 out of 60 months, no trip more than six months. There's a rebuttable presumption between six months and 12 months that you broke your continuous residence, but it's rebuttable, meaning that you can tell them really good reasons why I did it. I'll tell you the most, you know, I just had a, I just had a, uh, a client last year who was a medical doctor, and she did her, her, uh, her medical school uh, in the Caribbean. And then, uh, so she was out of the U.S. for nine and a half out of 12 months. But every time school was out, vacations and everything else, she came back to the U.S. So we showed she was in school, but she really never had any intention of abandoning her residence. We got her a citizenship. Something like that. Something like that would work. I, I don't know what your particular situation is. Uh, Julia Munoz, hi. I received a letter from USCIS today saying I did not have to do biometrics. They'll use my previous one from 10 years ago. Is something wrong? No, that's what they're doing right now. So they can speed up your work permit. That means it's good. It's not bad. Edward Swain, a friend's wife is asking for a divorce while the I-130 is still pending approval. What would be the consequence of divorcing before or after the I-130 is approved despite being in deportation proceedings? Uh, getting deported. Whether if your wife does not want to help you and you're in deportation, you're in some deep, 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 deep crap. You need help. Uh, Jamie Roberts, uh, last question on YouTube for right now. Hi. I don't know what BMY is. Hi. Oh, I guess, hi. My wife had two marriages before mine and she's out of status as she came in with a B2. Um, what's the rest of the question? I cut off. Uh, let's see if we can get the rest of the question. Uh, hi, my wife had two marriages before mine, and she is out of status as she came in with a B-1 visa. Will the history of marriage make the process of adjustment harder? She has never filed for adjustment. I don't think so. I think you're allowed to fall in love, fall out of love, fall in love, fall out of love. 50% of marriages don't work out. Um, you know, I got married. I got divorced. I'm sure I'll get married again someday in my life. So it happens to everybody. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. I would worry more about if you have a good affidavit of support and can you prove that you and your spouse are in a bona fide marriage. Let's go back to, to uh, Facebook. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Um, let's see. Excuse me one second. I lost my place. 
Aurora Bemi, did I ask this question already? Hi, Uncle Brad, can I submit my applications without the medical exam uh, due to the coronavirus crisis? Yes, you can. Uh, Katie and Plunkett, with a pre-comment of the day, and the award goes to Uncle Brad and the tremendous work he's been doing. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Jeanette Jabramalak. What happens to those who got the visa to come to live legally in the U.S. when the visa expired? What to do? Well, you know, that's a tough one. Because what happens is you go to the embassy, you get an immigrant visa. They tell you you have six months to enter. You take your time. And then all of a sudden, coronavirus shuts down the world. I don't know what's going to happen. We have to see what happens when the um, embassies reopen, but it is a big problem that a lot of people have. J.N. Pereira. Hi, Brad. When USC, okay, I asked that question already. Young Money. Young Money Rogers. I like that. He's young, he's got money, and his name is Roger. My driver's license was expired. I got pulled over. Oh, we answered that. That's about the VAWA case. Young Money. He's asking questions both on YouTube and Facebook. He's double fisting. Um, Stargirl Mika for the question. Brad, if someone had a work permit from a prior application, which is now expired, then they filed a new application for adjustment of status with a VAWA application, will the person receive a new work permit or will they renew the old? They're going to receive a new work permit. They're going to keep their old alien registration number. Um, Charles Casano. My cousin turned me down to be my affidavit of support because she's already sponsoring a close friend of hers and is uncomfortable about her name showing up to be a sponsor for an additional applicant. Would there be an issue for her to be my affidavit of support if she's already sponsoring someone else? There's no issue at all as long as she makes enough money and nobody, nobody is bothering her. Um, Stargirl Mika, also with a pre-comment of the day. Being here so long, the best thing I ever did was contact Brad Sparm Bernstein. Thank God for his law firm. Thank you very much. Uva Tareem Rahat. Hi, Brad. I, hi. Hi, Brad. Oh, I'm sorry. I was getting it wrong. Mr. Brad, hi. I came here on a K-1 visa. I got married in April 2018. I filed the I-45. I got my conditional green card that was issued November 12th, 2019. Now I want to ask, when can I apply for naturalization? I think I answered that. It's 90, it's 90 days before the three-year anniversary. So you have to wait the two years and nine months and three days for naturalization. I didn't answer that. I, I apologize, Irva. Uh, I did not. I did not. Uh, that was somebody else with a VAWA case with a similar question. Um, Bay Uama, uh with another pre-comment of the day. Brad, your analytical, analytical skills are on point. These are the four main categories affected the most. Yes, there are other categories, of course, but they are the four riskiest, sadly. That we would, I guess I was referring to uh, my discussion earlier about the people who are most likely to get ill from coronavirus, uh, old people, fat people, diabetic people, people with hypertension. Um, let's see what else we got here. Hernandez Sammy. Good evening, Brad. My wife is 20 years and I'm 32. And my wife plans to file an adjustment of status for me. Do you think the 12-year difference in our age will be suspicious? I think if you're in love with her, I don't think 12 years is, is terribly, terribly bad. I know lots and lots of people who are in relationships and they have a 12, 13, 14, 15-year difference. My sister is 12 years younger than her husband. And they've been married for 25, 28 years, whatever it is. So um, will they be suspicious? I don't know, but who cares? As long as it's a real marriage, you'll prove it. Um, Carol Anderson, the tiger, also with a pre-comment of the day. Brad, you are the most amazing person ever. You come to tell us all about what's going on out there. Thanks, Brad, for caring about all of us. And finally, the last question of the day. Uh, it, oh, also another pre-comment of the day, Charmaine Taylor. You state it like it is, please adopt me. Uh, all right, well, that's all I need is more, 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 more people and children to take care of. Uh, I love you, Charmaine, but no more adoptions. No, I'm sorry. Jeffrey Jeffer. Hey, Brad, did USCIS waive some green card interview for some non-immigrant visas? Yes, they are waiving a few of them, but, uh, but you should expect to get an interview. But yes, a few are being waived. And with that, we are coming to the end of the show for today. 
our hump day on Wednesday, April 29th. If you're watching on YouTube and you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. We had over to uh, over 170 people watching right now and only 76 thumbs up. Also, if you're watching on YouTube and you really enjoyed the show, you know what you can do to you know what you can do to help yourself? Subscribe. Subscribe right now. You subscribe to YouTube, you will be notified every time we come on live. You'll never miss a show. And if you're watching on Facebook, you know what also you can do? You can like and follow Brad Show Live. You'll never miss when we come on the show. I also have to tell everybody that if you want to get on my list to speak with me, call 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-LAW-LINK, 1-800-529-5465. Internationally, the number is plus 1-212-227-8933. If you did not get your immigration question answered, you can follow me on at Real Brad Bernstein on Instagram, and I'll be, you can drop me a DM. I'll try to help you answer your question. You can also follow at Brad Show Live. If you follow at Brad Show Live, you can enter into our new contest, which I believe is already up. All you got to do is find the new post for our new free consultation contest. Uh, tag five friends, like the post, and follow at Brad Show Live on Instagram. And let's see. Did I get everything? Yes, I did. And with that, let's get to our – I think I said a lot of comments in the day. Does Jill have – any other comments that she pulled out that I missed? Because I did a lot of pre-comments in a day. Let's see if there's any. Uh, Stargo Mika, Brad, stand up only if you have on underpants or nothing. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. I'm not a pornographic attorney, but yes, Stargo. Nick, so special. Thank you, Brad. I got a 10-year green card after asking your advice. Thanks a million. May God continue to bless you always. Thank you very much, Nick, and congratulations. And Becky, hallelujah said, I said it. You are the best lawyer in the USA. You never let us down. You're a blessing to us all, to the team also. Becky, I only got one thing to say to you. Hallelujah, Becky. And with that, I'm going to say my goodbyes right now. Um, I got to learn more languages. I'm going to start that next week. And with that, we will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching.